Welcome, Monster Energy Supercross race fans, to round 15 and our third and final stay at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Before we go west coast to Salt Lake City, we are doing the virtual track walk presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. And, you know, I'm going to be the track analyst today, but I'm bringing on a good friend with me, Brock Glover from Dunlop. How are you doing, Brock? Great, Tyler. Just, uh, gosh, can't even believe we're already through the, all three. This will be a third round here in Atlanta, and then uh, just insane that we're already around 15. I know. And, two, it is round 15 and our final West Coast round for the Monster Energy Supercross season before until we have the shootout because the first round in Salt Lake City is going to be the East Coast for the East Coast guys where we see Christian Craig and Colt Nichols battle for that 250 East Coast Championship. So for the West Coast 250 riders like Cameron McAdoo and Justin Cooper, this is going to be their final round before they get a two-week break. And let me just tell you the <laughs> unbelievable story with yeah, Cameron nice. McAdoo. Absolutely insane. It was. There was definitely some drama, <laughs> to say the least, the last round. But, uh, hey, you know what? It, it was interesting. It was kind of something we all we learned a lot, and we all learned a lot about uh, everything from, you know, the rules to the people saying, you know, should you be able to be, you know, re-enter the race if he's caused a, a red flag to, you know. But I, I, I personally don't think anything was broken uh, rule-wise, and I don't think uh, – I think the fact that he gutted it out, you got to give him a lot of credit for that. I mean, other than a pretty good thigh bruise, and I'm sure he was sore, but uh, mentally he was fine, and the bike was beat up, and he fought hard to get back and get on the podium. It was incredible. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yesterday when I seen him ride press, he looked a little, you know, he was riding gingerly, I would say, not his full you know, loose self, but Justin Cooper looked ready to go. And we just went through the first rhythm section right after the start before this fly racing supercross triple. And I think that's going to be a separator for, you know, the 250 and the 450 class because in press day, they were going three in, three again, and then quadding out. And then the consistent line was a, a double then three, then three, and then a double out as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how those lines develop with how much speed they're going to be coming into right after the start. But this cor this track is going to be a little bit more technical. I know that the Dirtworks crew wanted to make the track a little bit longer just to get a little bit more, you know, a little bit more time safe on the lap times of the races and stuff like that. So they added a couple new features that weren't on the track map. But, you know, as we can see, we have another flat corner in this fly racing corner. And then we're coming up on one of the longest whoop sections I've ever seen in, in a Supercross track. And definitely the longest whoop section we've had all year, Brock. Absolutely. On the, off to our left right here where the Dunlop tough blocks are right there. Yeah, I think there's what was, I, it's hard. To, it was hard for me to count them, but it was 16 or 18 of them in a row. It's a long, long section. Um, some quote unquote experts would say that might benefit, uh, you know, Ken Roxon and some of the other riders and maybe not Cooper Webb because he tends to be more of a rhythm jumper. Maybe the whoops aren't the strongest, but in press day, he was, uh, he was making any doubters maybe second guess themselves because he looked really, really good. But uh, in general, I like the track a lot more. This looks like my favorite track so far. And the fact that uh, the starting line, I wish all three rounds actually had this starting line. I think the starting line is fantastic. It's long, goes into a left sweeper and then a right sweeper just to kind of separate those hard, sharp 181 you know, corners. We had a lot of tip overs, not bad crashes, but just race wrecking tip overs in the last two rounds. So I'm excited about this new start. Yeah, no, me too. Um, just with the high speed start in that first couple corners, like you said, Chicane kind of left and to right. I think that's going to give some opportunities for some really close racing and not leave so much separation after those first couple corners. I think a lot of the pack is going to be together on that first lap as you know, where it seemed a little drawn out across the first lap you know, just because of those first couple corners. But, you know, this rhythm section has stayed the same since round 14. So they're going to be doing um, basically the same thing. I know a few riders were kind of experimenting with different lines just because there's actually going to be a double across this start straight 
or not the start straight, but across this 90 instead of a three, five, three. So you'll see some riders maybe, you know, doubling into this corner or maybe singling so they can get enough drive and enough traction to get across this monster energy double as you've seen. But, you know, as you've seen the ruts, um, already developing on press day yesterday, there's gonna, they're going to be quite a bit gnarlier today just because there's going to be quite a few more bikes and quite a bit more time on this track. Yeah, those sections you mentioned there, it's, it, you know, that's had pretty much three solid days plus the press days of riding on those same exact obstacles so that the ground is well, well broken in, well compacted. And, uh, you know, some of the other sections are newer, but that one's not. And it's, a, it's an interesting combo with that double. And then here, you can see the different heights of the takeoffs of these jumps right here to encourage a different rhythm section or a different pattern, if you will. Uh, the people on the right, the riders on the right will be, you know, two and then hit this triple. The button on the left will be able to launch, maybe even do all three. So it's going to be a mixture of a uh, rhythm section here and, and, and different, uh, a different rhythm of jumping. Yeah, and the line that we're walking right now, um, the riders were going double in that first one and then jumping off the tall one all the way to this landing that we're seeing right where those Honda, red Honda tough blocks are into this double. And I think that's going to be the fastest and most consistent line. I um, Maybe if someone was super aggressive, they're going to go you know, three on to that obstacle in the middle and then three off and maybe be able to you know, just get a side-by-side -side or a handlebar on the competitor next to them. But we'll just see how that line develops. Dirtworks does a really good job if they see a line that's, you know, progressively getting faster than the other one they'll even it out and they'll um they'll knock it down with a just a kind of a a tractor or just even it out as well so you know dirtworks is a, a phenomenal job doing this track as you can see we're coming up there's prep in this bowl corner just absolute to perfection and this track is quite a bit more technical than the past tracks we've seen um i think it's going to be about five seconds longer but we're looking at this rocky mountain um section and i was really intrigued by this section on tuesday because this section was a separator where they dot where they where they were tripling over this wall right here it was a lot more taller on tuesday it was about a second and a half faster and i think the person who can find their line through these rollers and find their rhythm early and they can stay consistently and can stay flowing through this section it's going to be a huge separator brock yeah, in this section, you'll see right here, they've been tweaking on this for uh, press day and then today too, even some more. You can see they're working on that knob on the left wasn't there in the beginning of press day and everyone was taking the left line. So they realized that and you can see they're making an adjustment, trying to make a little bit of slow down that outside line a little bit here where the tractor is. And then, you know, who knows, they might have to level, you know, lower the, the inside wall jump a little bit to see. But I think their plan was to try to get some people to launch into the sand section, but nobody was really doing that in the first outing. And then now they're starting to get two lines here. So again, they make adjustments all the time to make the best racing. And they're as good as anybody at that, uh, you know, the Dirtworks crew, and they've done a great job. And we've had fantastic racing on a big, wide, super cross track and, and, uh, I don't know. It's, it was, I can't, that last race was incredible there. The, I, I never would have thought that Cooper Webb was going to finish a sixth. Uh, I did think that Jason Anderson would be on the podium. And I think I called Chase Sexton to be on the podium too. And I, and I think he, one of those two guys could, I, I'm surprised they didn't get their first win, but uh, I'm expecting the possibility of a first win and, and who knows. And Kenny Roxon did exactly what he needed to do there. And, and he does need Chase Sexton his teammate to help him out with some points there and, and, and get between him and, and Cooper Webb for the championship. So it's getting more exciting and I kind of thought a couple of weeks, a couple of races ago that this thing would be uh, maybe Cooper Webb's to, to cruise into the last round of Salt Lake city. And it doesn't appear to be that case now. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And we're coming into the finish line where Ken Roxon, you know, took his win on Tuesday night and, you know, hopefully or, he can take another win on Saturday night just to tighten up this championship. Just, you know, I was focusing on Cooper Webb all day on Tuesday and he just 
didn't look comfortable and he didn't look like himself. But I seen him again press day yesterday and he looked like he was coming out with a vengeance. And we've seen it from Cooper Webb before. You know, he's a shark. And when there's blood in the water, he just somehow just turns it on. And I feel like he's flipped that switch from Tuesday and he just need a kick in the butt. And I think he's going to get back on track here on Saturday, but we'll see if Ken Rocks and Chase Sexton on that team Honda HRC can do, you know, kind of do anything and keep him at bay right now. The point spread with Cooper Webb out front is 13 points, you know, 13 points is Ken Rocks in back. And then Eli Tomac is 35 points as well. And we've seen that first win from Eli Tomac on the first round of Atlanta. So he could, you know, catch on fire as easily as Chase Sexton can win. Ken Rockson can win. You know, Cooper Webb can win. It's just amazing on the depth of the 450 class right now on how many different competitors can win this 450 class right now. I completely agree. And the parody has not been, I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not, I am biased to this thing. I don't think it's been this way since the eighties when I raced, when we had, you know, 10 riders that could win a race and you didn't even, we didn't even bother mentioning Justin Marsh and, J- and Jason Peterson, because those guys can win too. So right now, you know, either one of all the names that we've mentioned could easily win a race here. And I, in complete, uh, I concur the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Cooper Webb's, he, I, I do think he's going to come fighting back a lot harder. He, I think he's frustrated with himself from the other night finishing sixth, and I think he'll be, I think he'll be contending for a win here. So, well, uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm, I'm kind of giddy to be honest with you. I, I'm super excited to watch uh, the race. Yeah, and we didn't even we didn't even mention Aaron Plessinger, who was basically oh, on the track yeah. to make his first main event win. You know, on Saturday the first round yep. here. So it's just amazing that, you know, Jason Harrison's top qualifier, Aaron Plessinger leads lap. Eli Tomac gets a win. Chase Sexton's leading laps. It's just, you know, it's crazy the depth of this 450 class and it's crazy on just the level of competitiveness and how everybody's super close right now. It's, it's an amazing time to be a super cross fan. Let me tell you, Brock. Well, that's why they had the, the top, the season's top viewership, I believe, at the last round because people are tuning in, and, and uh, it's it's incredible. We just saw another nice section of sand there, so we've got two sand sections here at this track for the Atlanta three round, and then coming into a fast set of rollers. So, it's they've done a the track's awesome. Like I said, it's look how wide it is. It's like an outdoor track almost. So it's uh, it's it kind of reminds me of some of the. A, a little bit of the MXGP tracks that are are starting to morph themselves into a little bit of stadium, a little bit of a more confined and shooting for that one and a half minute to 145 lap time. So the fans can see it all. And, and that's kind of what we have here. We have a, a oversized uh, Supercross plus track and, and like they're wide, the lanes are separated. I, I really, I like this, this format. I hope they continue to have a couple of these uh, in the future schedules. Yeah, no, you could, uh, you know, you could go easy as to say this is a hybrid track. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's not the standard 22 feet wide supercross lanes as we've seen a couple sections that are, you know, that standard 22 feet wide. But, you know, when we're going into this Dunlop kind of bowl corner, as you could say, it's got the extra Why? footage. <laughs> yeah, it's the got the Wyoming. extra. Why am I obey? That's what that is. It's a big wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got the extra footage. And then we're going into another whoop section with the Dunlop whoop section. These are going to be dozer whoops. So they're a little bit more rolled over and then going, you know, into the over the over bridge. We're not going under it. So it's just the over bridge for this round. But, you know, just seeing the diverse of different obstacles and the speed that we can have and how many corners we can have and just how everything's stretched out. It's definitely made a good track for good racing and good competitive competitiveness to come out where people can jock for position and really work those areas that they're going to be liking to make up time on different riders for sure. I, I'm really excited. I think that overbridge, I think the pro circuit guys won't be too excited. They'll be happy to see those go in the rear mm-hmm. mirror. They've had a bike go off the side of them. They have had their lead rider crash into them, into them. <laughs> So they'll be happy to get that away. But the 250 class, I'm super excited about that too. Tight points race. You got Hunter Lawrence really catching fire to get up there and mix it up with a, you know, McAdoo's and, and then obviously Justin Cooper right now. He seems to be the class of the field. 
but you know he's just got a small cushion so there's not a lot of margin for error for him to try to get this win and then uh, head head to wait until that the shootout in the, in the last final round yeah no absolutely it is i've said it you know before and i'll say it again it is an amazing time being a monster energy supercross fan so make sure you guys catch race day live at 1 p.m on peacock and 7 p.m eastern or yeah 7 p.m eastern time on nbcsn to catch the live racing action so make sure you guys catch us next week you guys just watch the virtual track walk by dunlop motorcycle tires thank you